Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Hey guys, so today we are doing the how to set up your camera on the Galaxy Note or Galaxy Note 10. So I'm gonna walk you through all the steps on how to have the best overall photo quality and video quality and just the best experience possible. Kind of walk you through each uh, scenario. Now, if you do wanna know how to set up your phone, make your phone move faster like mine does, then you're gonna wanna check out our how to set up video. So your settings can look like this, your phone will move much quicker, all of those kind of things. Just check out our other video on how to set up the phone. This is all about the camera. So first of all, how you can launch the camera is by double pressing it. So double pressing the power button should be default for how to start your camera. I'm going to reset my camera so that again, I can show you guys how I set up everything. So now that it is reset, let's go to the settings. So first of all, we're gonna go into settings and go through a lot of things. So screen optimizer, I would have document scan. It's a really great way to actually get text if you want to just scan documents. Um, shot suggestion, I like and don't like. I usually leave it off uh, for the most part just because I, if you have trouble lining up your shots, go for it. But if not, just take it off. Scan UR codes. Definitely a great new feature they put on there. Definitely one I would recommend. Motion photos, I feel still doesn't do as good in low light, but if you do have those uh, kids or pets or things that move really quickly, that's when you want to uh, make sure to turn that on. Hold uh, your phone to either do burst mode or uh, create GIFs. Either one is good. I use create GIFs uh, overall just because I think it's a fun, cool way to do it but you can of course do whichever way uh, you choose, or you can also do different things such as here in save options. So um, if you are a pro user, I would recommend saving raw copies. Um, if you uh, do go into pro mode, I really don't go into pro mode that much. I like for when I have my mirrorless camera to have pro shots, but I don't really need it when I have my phone different uh, ways of shooting. I don't recommend doing this just because the really the format is not supported enough yet, so it's still not uh, where it needs to be. I do recommend this one right here though. Turn on the ultra wide correction. This makes it so that when you take a photo, the edges aren't kind of curvy. Uh, this will correct that. So it's a great thing to automatically turn on. And one thing that should be on by default in my opinion. Okay. Then we're going to go to your video quality. Now this is a really big one because there's lots of different video qualities. The best overall, in my opinion, is still the one that I've recommended for many years and that is 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now here's the thing. When this is on, you cannot do certain video effects and you can't do auto tracking focus. However, I would recommend usually, you know, go straight to 4K, 60 frames per second. But when you do that, you actually lose your video stabilization. Um, and although you still have the optical image stabilization, the, uh, the uh, electric one is a lot better, in my opinion, when combined with optical. So I recommend most people shoot this. If you have a gimbal, then by all means, shoot this one and your quality will be absolutely amazing. But if not, for most average users, I would do this. Now with 60 frames per second, it makes it look lifelike. It's what this video is shot in as well. So if you actually turn this video to 1080p 60 frames per second, you will see kind of the motions that I do are actually more lifelike than they would normally be on a standard 30 frames per second. It's boring. No one likes 30 frames per second. It's outdated. Uh, really, everyone likes 60 or 24. Then for the front camera, again, you can up it to the 4K resolution. It just doesn't support video effects, but it does still have the stabilization on there. So that is a really good thing. I would definitely shoot in 4K if possible for your front facing video. Okay, advanced recording options. Zoom in mic is on by default and just leave it on. It's a great feature. Um, however, if you want to shoot the color correction mode, it's again going to change it to 1080p at 30 frames per second. It's not that noticeable for most places and the colors still aren't as good as they need to be. So I would not turn this on and I would not turn this video format on. Again, not as universal as it needs to be for it to take over. It's a great format because the videos are a lot smaller, but it almost can't be shared and can't be opened by everyone. 
It's basically Samsung and iPhones in that game right now. HDR, apply uh, when needed or always apply. I do when needed, uh, but you can do always apply if you like that kind of dynamic uh, looks of it. Now, if you did want to shoot 1080p at 30 frames, you can put tracking autofocus. What that does is it will track something when moving. This is only really recommended for sports, but sports looks so much better in 1080p, 60 frames. I just recommend, you know, moving with the person uh, and it will get a much better overall shot. Okay, uh, this one is something you want to turn off. So what this does is it has it kind of flipped. So if you actually turn this off, the main thing you wanna know is text. So when you take a selfie and there is text in the, in the shot, it will be proper instead of uh, being flipped. So that's what you wanna just know. Uh, your shirts or anything that has text in it will look weird if not, so just turn that off. Location tag, I turn that on because I wanna know where my photos and videos are taken. If you don't, turn that off though. Camera modes. Okay, now everyone is gonna have their own opinion on this, so just know that, that everyone will have their own opinion. This is what I set up my phone like. Again, feel free to set up which ones you like and which ones you normally use often. So, I turn off pro mode. Again, this will be sacrilegious to some people. I turn that off. I don't need it on my phone. I also turn off super slow-mo. Slow-mo is a much better quality and it's just gonna be better overall. Hyperlapse I also turn off just because I don't use it that often, so I usually just have it off. Um, yeah, if you want it on, then I can just turn it on when needed. But again, my whole thing is I wanna declutter this area on the bottom. So I have my photo, my video, my live focus video, which I do use. I use slow motion. Live focus photo, I definitely use that. Panorama, I'm actually going to move uh, to the ends just because I don't really use Panorama that much. Same with Instagram, I will actually turn that off. You can have it on, but it's just something you want. Uh, live focus night food are the ones that I use uh, the most often. So those I will keep. And again, that just gets rid of four of them so that there's less things on the bottom. Just the one I'd like to do. Shooting mode, I would turn voice control on. Floating shutter we'll get to. Uh, show palm is a really nice one. It just means you, if you have your palm like this, then it will, uh, when you're taking a selfie, it will then take the photo or do a timer um, on there for you. Take picture, photo, and video is the main thing I would recommend your volume rocker do. If, however, if you feel more comfortable using Zoom that way, you can do that. And uh, on some carriers, you can turn the shutter sound off. Uh, it depends on the carrier if they disable it or the country if they disable it. Some of your phones will not have this. Okay. So you have all these different effects. Now, the one thing to know about when it comes to live focus and live, uh, oh no, just live focus. Um, that is, that it blurs out the background, but right here, it automatically applies skin smoothness. So I like to take that off. So just if, depending on you, I would recommend taking that off. Second thing I wanna let you guys know about, keep it at three by four aspect ratio. That is the full megapixels for this phone. If you actually change the resolution, so a nine by 16, for instance, what you're actually doing is also lowering the quality of the photo as well. So just tip, do not do it. Just keep it at three by four, simple and easy. Then when we go to the selfie camera, always have it at wide. I don't know why they even bother doing the single person one because it's not that good. Uh, so just keep it at wide. I also recommend just getting your selfies on better quality. Get, do a two second delay. It's, it's just a better timer. And then again, for the selfies, you're gonna wanna hit this button right here click beauty and take the smoothness off. I think smoothness is the only one that's on there, yes. So just a way of doing it, beauty off, simple, quick and easy, and now you don't have to worry about that beauty filter on there. So yeah, those are going to be the main steps to take over uh, for your regular photo taking. 
Now you do have Bigsby Vision, which can just let you do certain things. So I'll just agree to these. And so Bigsby Vision, is, you have a lens feature, you have a translation, you have things like that. So lots of different things you can do uh, when it comes to Bigsby Vision. It's, it's up to you if you want it. The main thing I always used it for was QR scanner that's built into your camera now. So no really need to. And AR emoji, you can create AR emojis of yourself now. So again, feel free to do that if you want to. You can uh, kind of like Bitmoji or uh, the, I think uh, Apple calls it Animoji. Uh, all that stuff is uh, just available if you want to set up your emojis that way. So let's get to the last part. So one really cool thing is uh, the shutter button. You can actually grab it and move it around. So that way, if you want to hold your phone at an angle and take a photo, boom, you can just really quickly do it at a nice angle. Now that's going to be one thing that comes in really handy when you just want to take it in a specific way. The other thing you want to know about is right here. So first you have your wide shot, your zoom in shot, regular and ultra wide. So really nice. Now, if you want to fine tune it, you can also go like this. And that's how you can quickly get to any specific zoom you want. And if, as soon as you tap away, you can kind of go there. And another thing you want to know about is how to check your exact measurement. So basically you can actually lower this light bulb right here and a quick tip, uh, definitely for night shots, I always recommend tapping and lowering because it's just gonna be a better looking photo. Trust me, uh, if you do that more often, you'll see better and better results every time. Um, and then you can also hold it all the way down and lock it to that particular thing. So if you have something that's brighter and darker in a shot, put it on the one you want it to focus on and the, um, the brightness level you want it to have and that will lock it. So yeah, that is your camera walkthrough guys. Hopefully you did like it. If you did, please give a like thumbs up down below. It's really great uh, features to have on here and definitely you're gonna see a lot of things. Uh, in terms of the camera modes, you have the ability of course to do like night mode, which is just gonna be, you have to hold it for a long time, but it will turn out much better. You have live focus, you have live video, which is really good. I definitely recommend do the third one. It's going to be probably the best video you can do on here. I have it on my Instagram at YouTube tech guy. So yeah, lots of different stuff you can do for video. If you have a very, very shaky shot, you can turn on the steady one. This does put it back to 1080p at 30 frames per second, but it is extremely, extremely steady. So you have that ability. But those are all going to be all the little tidbits uh, other than the main functions. So again, let me know if you guys have any more questions and make sure to check out our video on how to set up the Galaxy Note 10 as well as how to speed up the phone and save battery life coming later this week. Thank you guys always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you. Or at least that's what YouTube tells me. Thanks again.